I would call your attention to the joys and concerns as listed in today's bulletin. Are there any additions that you would like to add to that? Seeing none, let us pray. Lord, today we celebrate Laity Sunday, the ministry of all Christians to love God and neighbor. On this Sunday, we lift up the vocation of all who follow the way of Jesus and lead others to him, particularly as we remember the gift of those who loved us into leadership when we remember the faith of our spiritual mothers, grandmothers, sisters, sons, brothers, and fathers, let us find our own hearts reignited to serve and witness in deeds and words that heal and free. Let their memory of grace that has crossed our paths direct us toward spiritual growth opportunities that can spring from authentic and consistent relationships with other people, especially those beyond our church walls. Lord, help us to be witnesses of grace and love to those wrestling with the deep longings of life, to see their families survive and flourish, to belong to a community of love, to discover a vocation that fulfills God's deep purpose for them. And let these moments be moments of grace where listening love becomes the means to healing and wholeness on the journey of faith. And let us be faithful as we share in God's mission and purpose for the world. And now, Lord, we pray as you have taught us to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you, are, when you were pagans, somehow to other, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one is speaking by the Spirit of God, says Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. So today is going to be a little different than we usually. I'm not going to stand up here and make you listen to me. I'm going to have you listen to um, actually four of our congregants. And I'm going to do a little bit of introduction, but I think it's important for us to realize that we are the church. It's not just the pastor that stands up here. We all are the church, and the church impacts us each differently. Not correctly or incorrectly, just differently. And so I wanted you to hear four different stories. And we're going to start Sue Mitroff. If you've not met Sue, some of you haven't. Most of you have. Sue's been here for a couple of years. Ever since I've been here, I'll put it that way. <laughs> Long before that. And has been an integral part of our church in a number of ministries. So I'm going to have Sue tell you how the church impacts her. Well, you were talking about how I've been here for a long time, yes. I started at this church when I was seven years old. Now, that's a long time ago, people. Long time ago. Um, my family moved here from Anderson, where we attended the Noble Street Methodist Church, and I was baptized there. And before that, um, my remembrance, first remembrance of church was at Little Country Church in Princeton, near the Princeton area, uh, called Heights Chapel. It was up Little Country Church up on a hill, and I have very fond memories of that. 
Um, I was bound to this church by Sunday school, our youth group. We had a big youth group um, when I was in high school, and we would come back on Sunday night and have meetings. And of course, the choir. I was in choir when I was in high school, and then through the years when I had children, I couldn't always when they were little. But um, we had a Sunday school class that was called the Young Married Group. And we met at the bottom of the stairs, a little room. Emma and Ed started there, lots of us. That's where we got started. And then much later, I think they called us the older folks. We met there in the parlor. Imagine that. <laughs> um, we also at one time had a small, uh, I've been in different Bible studies and small groups, but uh, this was a real intimate little group, a few of us, where we could discuss our problems and pray uh, for one another. And then the Bible study through the years, and of course, like I said, choir. Um, in the choir, we felt like it was just not only singing, but it was, we had a lot of fun, and it was spiritual. And we felt that we um, were an important part of the service. We, we contributed greatly to the service. Uh, when I was a young wife and mother of four, and uh, I would get my children ready and come to, <laughs> come to church with four children, that was important to me. And you know, we, then we'd always have Sunday school afterwards. Well, it wasn't easy, but it was important. Um, later, after being married for 19 years, I divorced, and um, I felt like a failure. I felt like I had failed in some way. But you know, God never failed me. Um, I married my husband, Mike, um, and we were married 37 years. He was sick for several years, and I took care of him, basically alone. Um, but I couldn't have done that without God's help. Could not have. And then my son, Tom, died in 2012. And of course, that was devastating. God was always there for me, always. I may have abandoned God at some time through the years, but he never abandoned me. The church has been my sanctuary and a genuine part of my life, always. I was brought up in the church, I grew in my faith, and our faith may have been have ebbs and flows, but our God is always there for us. Our church building is beautiful and many changes have occurred through the years, but people come and go with relocating or death, but we are the church, you and I. We must have a common goal to love and support one another. I love my church. I love my God, and I love all of you. And I want, to, want you to keep in mind two songs that come to me. There's lots. But the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Also, one of my favorites is one the choir sings, and it's in this very room. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. That was wonderful. The next person I'm going to introduce, I'm actually going to start with her mom and dad, because Jim and Ruth Clifton were like a huge part of this church when I started, and Debbie was part of that, and then and Debbie's also, you know, it's like most of us, we're mom. We're not people, we're moms. We're Heidi and Scott and Lydia's mom, <laughs> but she's been a huge part of this church for many years and has started... With her mom and dad, they started the live nativities, which has been decades that we have done that. So I wanted Debbie to let you hear her version of how this church impacts her.
I remember when we first moved to Elwood, I was in the uh, sixth grade, and right away we had to find a church. That was mom and dad's big thing. You had to find a church very minute. So anyway, so we found this church, and they loved this church. They um, worked in it, and uh, they, lo they loved God, and that's what they brought me to believe. There's three things that I really, I tell my kids and different people that I really believe in, and you don't tread on it, you know. I get sort of ticky if you do. And it's God in the church, uh, my family, and my school. And so those are just three things that you don't want to mess with me on <laughs> because I'm not going to, you know, come down any of that. Um, I always, I wanted to always thank you guys. You don't know how much you guys mean to me. Um, they say, oh, you're church family. No, you guys are just my family. You're not even my church family. You're my family. You've nourished me since sixth grade, and um, you just don't know how much I totally appreciate that. Um, some of the things that I think have happened in my life are my, you know, I was confirmed here. Uh, I had my wedding here. Some of you guys even helped with it. I know Emma helped with it. So, um, and um, my children were baptized here, all three of them. Uh, all three of them had their weddings here, which means a lot, except for Lyd. And when they redid the, thing, the altar up here, I always said, how am I going to have Norm in my picture Heidi and Ben and Scott and Melissa, they're all going to be alike, you know, because they're in the same, and poor Lid, but anyway, we worked it around so that they sort of look alike now, so we're, it, this is good. Um, but also, we've had funerals here. Uh, Mom and Dad both were buried from the church, and that meant a lot, and um, the funeral dinners meant a lot, too. Um, my grandchildren were all baptized here, except for one yet. We've got to get him going. Um, my grandchildren, joined, some of them joined the church. Um, many had wonderful Bible study times. Um, it's just been really fun with my Bible study people. The girls will always say, oh, yeah, Mom, you got Bible study on Wednesday, so I suppose you'll get up early that day. And I go, yeah, I will. You know, I don't like getting up early, so anyway, but I, I do for Bible study. And... Uh, then for the nativity, I just, I enjoy it so much, and to think that it started with just a few animals outside, and we had chocolate, we had hot chocolate outside, and nothing as immense as we have now. But I do want to thank you guys for nurturing me through these hundred years, uh, how old I am, but, um, and I want you to, we got to keep the faith, we got to keep going and enjoying each other. And thank you. Thanks, Debbie. That was perfect. All right, so you heard two people who started as children, chose to attend as adults, and now you're going to hear from Ben. Um, I'm going to guess he has a slightly different version of the Alexander family to share with us. Um, he married Heidi Ellsbury, well, Heidi Alexander, now Ellsbury, and I'm guessing if you've met Heidi that he really didn't have a whole lot of choice of whether he was going to attend church or not. But the thing he did have the choice about, and I would love to share some of the things that he's done, he chose to participate. So he has been integral in the live nativity, but he and, and Heidi also led children's church for many, many, uh, couple, several years there, and has just participated in a number of things. And he didn't have to do that. He could have chosen just to come to church. So I wanted to hear from Ben a little bit. All right, so here's my 20-minute dissertation about <laughs> Heidi and how she got me into church. So, no. Um, oh. <laughs> my bad. All right, so... Uh, so Manet asked me earlier this week to uh, come up here and, and discuss this, and I have to tell you it took me about five days, six days to uh, see. She asked me on Monday. I contacted her yesterday. So six days to um, commit to this because I really do struggle with it. Uh, when growing up, uh, it was more of a 
Um, it's not really much of a church life, but it was more of a, you know, you're told, hey, you're a Christian. Um, Mom would try to, to get us to, to church. It was kind of off and on a little bit. As I'm growing up, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I went to as many schools as there are grades, so we moved around a lot. The, um, the impact that it made on me was I, had, uh, I was impacted by a, uh, a little church in, uh, near Fairland. It was, a, um, it was a Baptist church, and my friend and his family would take me to their church, and, and I got to experience the, uh, the giving part of church where they would pass around the collection plate, and they would hand me coins, and I would put it in the plate, and I was probably about 10 years old at the time, and, and didn't really understand the, the meaning behind it, but it was just something that we did, and I couldn't understand really at that time why I couldn't buy G.I. Joe's with the change that they gave me. Um, then, I, then later on, moved to another area. I uh, went to a church where the uh, church bus would come around and pick up the kids in the, uh, in the small town, and I got on that church bus, and the people were kind to me at that church as well. Um, it was kind of like I'm a rug rat. They kind of take you in. They try to tell you about church and religion, and you just kind of learn from there. Really didn't appreciate that as much, but I was also a young kid at that time. Uh, did like the uh, the entertainment value of it. I guess you can say that um, the sun, the Sunday school piece of it. And then uh, really later on, um, I mean, if I had never walked into a church for the rest of my life at that time, because really from from that last church to this church uh, was really the last time that I ever walked into a church. Uh, if I could have never walked into a church again for the ne- for the rest of my life, um, that would be okay because I would still be considered a, a Christian and I would still think of myself as a good person and uh, I would still believe in God. Um, the forgive me here, I made a lot of notes on this. Um, in uh, in fifth grade, the uh, I lived in New Palestine and we lived in a, a small little single one bedroom place the um and i would walk to school each day uphill in the snow of course um and then but at, there was a church that had a bicycle to give away and they came to me one day and said hey you want a bicycle and i was like hey great come to find out later on as i grew a little bit older i figured out that the church had a bicycle to give to a poor kid and they and and since I was doing good in school and I had a lot of things going against me, but I was still doing good in school, I acted right in school, I was doing the right thing in school that they decided to give me this gift of this bicycle. And I appreciate to, to this day. Um, basically, um, as I was getting older, TV came around and I got a little bad taste in my mouth due to some of the older generation would know this is a, a couple of people named Tammy Faye and, and Jimmy. Um, seeing them on TV and seeing how, how they treated church, I, I didn't agree with, and I, I thought of, of it as a negative concept of, of how church shouldn't be. Church, in my opinion, should be more of a uh, do well for others, take care of people, um, try, <clears throat> try to bring uh, positivity in people's lives. The uh, The Stability in my life at that time wasn't that great, um, as you know with Heidi. Um, she's become the most stable person in my life. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the whole concept and perception of church is, is you come into a church, mainly people that, that I would see come in would be people that are hurt. They're, they have something negative going on in their life, and they're looking for some type of solution to be able to help them. So whether they're hurt mentally, they're hurt physically, drugs, alcohol, they try to find a, they, they try to get past that and they find church to help them be that supportive factor for them. Church, church provides a foundation for when there's an absence of something in your life. And, and whether you have a building for a church or not, you, you have to have a, the ability to recognize that not everything is all unicorns and happiness in your life, that there is something that's, that you go through pain on. We're all built differently. We all have different things that go on in our life. We all have different experiences. So 
church, you know, really helps the, the people in need. Um, and the church, you know, is a place for people for when they think there's no other hope. So the church is a great foundation for the community. And it's, it's something that people really, a lot of people overlook and they, and they don't see it as a good value, it seems like these days. Um, yes, you had the mega churches, the bigger churches that are, you know, bigger cities. When I first came here, we had 150 people. Today we have, you know, 25, 30. Um, but it's still mighty and strong, even though it's, it's gotten smaller with people. Um, people, um, you know, people come to church for different reasons, and, and I do support for whatever their personal reasons are. It's important for people to have a sense of belonging. They, they, they want to feel closer to God. They, everyone's got their own individual reason why they actually come to church. As a human, um, people naturally want to help others. The, the only thing that gets, in, that gets in front of people wanting to help others is fear and negativity that gets in the way of this. And I just feel that, we, that humanity or people just want to be able to help each other. Um, basically, the things that, that I do is the cause of the history of my experiences. Um, these, I'm going to share some activities that I do, um, and I don't publicly state these things, uh, but I will today. So, <clears throat> so growing up, yeah, it was a case of, you know, we, we didn't have much food. We, you know, we kind of scrounged around for everything. Everything was paycheck to paycheck type of thing. And even today, if there is any type of leftovers, whether it's a, a work event, or anywhere, it's more of a, I will take those leftovers and I will either eat those or I will find someone to give to. So a lot of time, a lot of time at my bank, we would have a, a, a lot of leftovers left over and then I would take those leftovers and take them to Wheeler Mission downtown Andy. It was, it was on my way home and the people there appreciated. Uh, we, we go to uh, whatever function that it is, I, if there's leftovers to be had, I try to take it, I take it to, you know, the fire station or try to find some homeless people to give it to. Um, I try to pay it forward on a regular basis. Um, uh, I, I, have a, I have a different attitude when it comes to giving. I, I try to, I'm a big lover of McDonald's if you know me, and, and about every other week I'm, I'm buying someone's meal behind me in the drive-thru. Um, I have no idea who they are. It was just always important to me to pay it forward. The cool thing about my job is I'm in finance and I've impacted so many people in a positive way with their personal finance. That's very satisfying to myself to know that that's one less thing that people have to worry about in their life, to be able to worry about at home. People fight for many, many different things. There's a, you know, a divorce for whatever reason, but finance is one of the pieces that I like to take away from that um, heartache that you have at home. If I can help you on the finance piece and make your life financially better, it's just one less thing you have to worry about. Um, basically, um, help, basically to sum up, to help others, give my opinion on things in the situation, I'm just trying to make things better. Um, try to leave you the following words of wisdom of how church has helped me, helped me and helped mold me to be a good person. Um, being, you know, basically being a Christian means being good to others inside and outside the church. The only people I really don't care for are, are the mean people. So, um, to, you know, I like to, to be able to give to others, um, but I can only give to others that are willing to help themselves. And um, you can do for others. Um, you can do that things that won't cost you anything to help others. You know, just a simple smile. Quality of life is important. Quantity is not. Enjoy life while you're able to. Time is the only thing that cannot be bought. And to uh, finish up, just smile and be kind and avoid the negativity. And that's all I got. Thank you. Aren't you glad he agreed to do that? So the last one we have is actually a video, and I wanted to do this for a couple reasons. Um, one is because it, our church is not just the people that are sitting in the pews. 
We have a lot of people who are online. And I think it's important for us to remember that because sometimes it's easy to just focus on the 25 or 30 that are here. And there's a whole lot of other people out there. And the other thing I wanted to remind you is, is that just because the people aren't in this building doesn't mean they aren't part of our church and we haven't had an impact. So you're going to hear from my son, who is, is clearly my family, but he also sees many of you as his family. I think he teases Ashley as relentlessly as he teaches Rachel. I know he sees Joel as a brother. He, with Steve, um, through confirmation, John and Beth, he sees parent figures. He's had a few of you as teachers, so he's, <laughs> he has enjoyed a huge family in our congregation. And while he doesn't come to our congregation anymore, he does participate. And so that's one that we've sent out and that he will be changing the world in other places. So hopefully we can have his video. All right, so I think I'm supposed to talk to you guys about um, what the church has taught me or what, the, what it's done for me, not just Elwood First United Methodist, but also the church in general. And kind of three things come to mind, um, faith, friendship, and fellowship. Oh, we're here to, to grow our faith together and to worship, but also um, it's, it's taught me to have faith in myself as well as in someone else. So there, there are times in my life that things have happened that have been out of sight of my control and, and just learning how to float necessarily instead of swim against the current. Um, friendship and fellowship. I mean, obviously friends, you get friends out of it. Joel Mosher and I have been running together since we were kids and still do sometimes. But um, God, I guess, is as a friend too, the friend to turn to. There's a few times or a few constants in life, and, and God is one of those. He's around everywhere. He's here. He's in Kansas when I was there. He's been everywhere else in my life that I was. So, um, even when my friends were still in Indiana and I was in Kansas, I had somebody to talk to, to work through problems with. Who, who would listen and who I knew had my best best interest at heart, even if in the moment I didn't think it was. Um, but fellowship also, um, just doing what's right, um, even if you didn't get paid or didn't get notoriety for it or an award or anything, just helping out when you can and where you can. Um, there are times that I helped old farmers out. Um, they didn't have enough help to do it themselves. They just needed a guy running a tractor, drilling or working ground or any of that friends, or model houses, um, just in anything, co-workers, loading and unloading equipment, um, just any time you can help out to, to lend a helping hand because there's some time in your life that you're going to need one too. Um, so it's pretty short and sweet, but that's kind of all I got. Um, so anyway, thanks for listening. All right. So hopefully this, this morning you've heard that we are all are laity, and laity are impacted in a variety of ways, and we impact the world in a variety of ways. And so as, as you leave today, I hope you take with you that you are in ministry. The ministry doesn't just happen in these four walls, or even just within our congregation or the ministries that we do. And we do a lot of really neat ministries. I'm not saying that. But every day of your life, you are in ministry, the people that you meet, the people you connect with. So I pray for you that you will serve God every place that you can, in every way that you can, and as often as you can. As we go from here, and before I give the benediction today, I want to thank each and every single one of you for being a part of the laity of this church and the way that you do ministry to our community and to our world. Each and every one of you are so very, very important. So I thank each of you for being the laity of our church and for your service, for your support and love of my family and you have become our family in the way that you have embraced us. So now, may the Lord be with you all. May you continue to serve and love your God. May you be at peace. Amen.